everybody, Yankee here. I wanted to take some time today to do a video that I've had a few people request over the last couple of weeks. It seems some people are wanting me to do another guide to how to inspect a revolver before you purchase it. Now this could be a new revolver, but it's most likely going to be a used revolver. I've done videos on this in the past, but most people can't be bothered to search. So I'm going to do a little bit more comprehensive and involved video today of the process. Now to do this properly, you're going to need a few things. First off, you're going to need the gun that you're wanting to buy. You're going to need a flashlight, which most people should be carrying anyway. And you're going to need a small punch or maybe a small Allen wrench, something like that. And if you can have a Q-tip with you. If you have these things, you'll be able to inspect the gun very thoroughly. So let's go ahead here and get started on what you'll need to do. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do when someone hands you a gun is uh, never assume that they took all the rounds out of it before they handed it to you because they might not have. So go ahead, check it, make sure it's clear. With a revolver, it's really easy to do. You don't got to worry, is there one hiding somewhere in the chamber or something? Because when you open the cylinder, you see the chambers. So if there's nothing in there, well, then there's nothing in there. Now that you've confirmed it's not loaded, just give it the quick once over. Eye it from one end to the other. Make sure you don't see any gouges, any nicks, any scrapes. If it's a blued gun, make sure that the finish is even, that there's no patched spots. Just go over it as uh, quickly as you can and just make sure it looks like a solid piece, one that you would not mind buying. One thing in particular you might look for at this stage is make sure the barrel's aligned properly. Now this is a pinned barrel, so you're not gonna find any problem with this one, but if a gun has a compression fit barrel, make sure it's aligned nicely. Doesn't matter if it's Smith & Wesson, Taurus, Ruger, whatever. If they have a compression fit barrel, make sure it's aligned because that has been a problem in the past, mostly with Smith & Wesson, but with other revolvers too. All right, now that you've confirmed that it's unloaded, you've looked it over, let's get to checking it out. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is dry fire it. Now you don't have to just go bang, bang, bang. Somebody might not like that if you do that with their gun, but you know, cock the hammer, pull the trigger, let the hammer go back forward. Cock the hammer, pull the trigger, let it go back forward. Do that through all cylinders. Make sure there's nothing that you're noticing that's bad. Make sure the trigger's moving smoothly. Make sure the hammer's catching and falling when it's supposed to. Just make sure everything is going fine. Now, if it gets past that part of the test here, now what you're gonna to wanna to do is just lightly put your fingers on the sides of the cylinder. Don't squeeze it, just put light pressure on it. And then cycle through all the cylinders with light pressure. You wanna make sure that that cylinder doesn't stop or get hung up, it's not advancing very strongly, just by putting your fingers, like I said, on the side there, giving a little resistance. And once you get through all the cylinders once or twice, you'll know it's doing pretty good. This gun looks like it is fine so far. Next, check the cylinder lockup. You're gonna check for slop here. Now you don't want a lot of slop ever. When the hammer is forward, you don't want a whole lot of slop, but it will move some, and you'll hear it while it's moving. Hear that there? But you know, shouldn't really be able to see it much. Shouldn't be a whole lot of movement. And then you wanna cock the hammer and test the slop then. And make sure to do this on every individual cylinder. Then it should be locked up pretty tight. You'll feel very little movement at all. You might feel a tiny bit, but not a whole lot. This should be pretty steady. Now I said you could have a little bit of movement, but the exception to that is a Colt. Colts are very precise when it comes to that. So once you cock that hammer back, there might be a little slop there when the hammer's back, but pull the trigger and hold the trigger to the rear and that cylinder should not move at all. When that trigger is held to the rear, after the hammer has been cocked, that cylinder should feel like it's welded in place. Not so much on Smith & Wesson's, Ruger's, or Taurus, but on a Colt, when that trigger is being held to the rear, that cylinder should not move. On the Smith, you still might have a tiny little bit of wiggle, but it shouldn't really be noticeable. It still should be locked up pretty tight, especially once the hammer's fallen and the trigger is held to the back. All right, another thing you wanna check while you're checking lockup is check the hammer. Make sure it doesn't fall on its own without the trigger being pulled. And to do this, you just try to push it forward. See if you can make it go forward. It should be rock solid. If it's moving at all, you probably got a little bit of an issue. Should be, like I said, like it's welded in place, like this one right here is. 
Another thing to be doing while you're doing this stage, while you're cocking the hammer, is watch the internals here in front of the hammer. Check and see if your hammer block or your transfer bar are actually working properly. If it's a transfer bar, like in a Ruger, it'll go up when you cock the hammer back. If it's a hammer block, like in the Smith & Wesson, it will actually go down when you pull the hammer back. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see that on camera, but with your naked eye, you should be able to look in there and see that. All right, at this point, this gun's doing pretty well. It seems like a really nice gun. It's got a few little blemishes on it, but I've had this gun for a long time. It's been in many a range bag. So that's understandable. None of it looks like serious damage, just looks like a little bit of age on the gun. So, so far, this is a gun I would definitely buy. Now it's time to look a little bit closer at some things. The first thing you're going to want to check is the barrel rifling. This is when you're going to want to have your flashlight because not a lot of light gets into the barrel. So you're going to want to shine it into the barrel from the back side while you look from the front side and inspect in there and make sure that the rifling is clean, that there's not a lot of lead buildup, and that there's no damage. Now, lead buildup, powder residue, those things can be taken care of, but if there's gouges or anything like that, well, you're probably not gonna to wanna to buy that gun because that's not gonna be a good gun. So make sure you check very thoroughly for that. And remember, a big heavy patch of lead somewhere could indicate that there's damage to that barrel there. So if a gun is filled with lead, make sure that you wanna get that out of there before you buy the gun. Now, this is where you can actually use this Q-tip if you've got one. After you've visually inspected it and you don't see anything, you can take the Q-tip and rub it around in there. Since it's cotton, if it snags on anything, if there's any little jagged edges or anything, any damage to the rifling, well, it'll snag on it and it'll start to pull the cotton. Uh, if it comes out a little bit dirty, that's not a problem. But if it starts snagging and pulling the cotton, you've probably got damage in your rifling. And that right there would be a good indicator that you need to look closer. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is check the actual lockup here. Now, when you push the cylinder release forward, there's actually a system of things that push each other forward. You should see motion from back here all the way to the front of the gun. The little piece at the front there should be pushed out. That's how you're releasing the lockups. If you'll look there, you'll see that that little piece at the end there is pushing forward and back every time I push the cylinder release. That's how you release the cylinder. Make sure all that's working properly and the cylinder stays where it's supposed to be until you push that cylinder release. All right, now before you open it up, you can really quickly check the seam right here where the crane lines up with the body just to make sure that there's no noticeable damage there because people love to slam cylinders home. It's very unlikely they'll damage it bad enough that you'll notice anything here, but you can still check anyway. And one more thing you might want to check before you actually open the cylinder and start looking further is make sure that rod looks straight inside of the underlug there. If it looks like it's bent, that's not a good thing. So look at that first before you open the gun. And then when you open the gun, make sure that you test it by pushing it forward. Make sure it moves very smoothly. Make sure it's not scraping somewhere. That's another sign that it might be bent. Just make sure you keep pushing in and out a couple of times and make sure it's nice and smooth and seems like it's straight and looks like it's straight. And then you're gonna inspect the star here. You're gonna make sure it lines up properly when it's closed. And when you open it up here, you're gonna check all around it, make sure there's no damage, make sure everything's where it's supposed to be and make sure everything looks in good condition. Now while you got the cylinder open, you can check the forcing cone. You just wanna make sure that it is in good condition. There's no big nicks or gouges or cracks in it. Now this one does have the bottom filed off because this is an older K-frame. That won't be the case on new K-frames, but if you see some older ones, that will be there. Just make sure that there's no cracking or chips or dings or anything and you should be fine. You can also take this time here to check for flame cutting. Now flame cutting occurs when the flame from the ignition of the round escapes from that little space between the cylinder and the forcing cone, and it actually starts to deteriorate and degrade the top strap. So you wanna make sure that none of that's going on there. Now, that's not likely in a stainless steel gun, but if your gun's gonna be aluminum or scandium, you're gonna to wanna to check for that. They'll probably have an extra little piece there to help prevent it, but still, it's always a good idea to look for it. All right, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to look into and check here is the cylinder bores. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that they're undamaged, that there's no sign of injury or defect or anything in there. Make sure no one's had a 
overpowered round that damaged the inside of the cylinder or maybe even bulged the cylinder. So make sure it's good and clean and level and even and that there's no signs of wear or damage inside, especially the little rings at the bottom, you know, the little lip. Make sure that they're all intact and that they're not damaged. And if that's all looking good, then you're probably okay. Now, one thing it is nice to do with this though, is if you put a white piece of paper in front of you, then it's much easier to look at the bore on these because that white paper will light up inside that cylinder and show you any imperfections. So that's a nice little trick for inspecting the bore of the cylinder. Since you can actually get it out here, putting something light colored in front of it makes it much easier to look for damage. All right, if everything's checked out so far, now you get a little more in depth here. And this is where you're gonna need your little punch. What you're gonna do is you're gonna push in on that little button right there. That's the button that pushes your cylinder release when you push forward on the actual lever out here. It pushes that little button forward and opens the cylinder. When the cylinder is closed, that little nub on the cylinder pushes this backwards and resets the gun to where you can cock the hammer. What you're doing with this is you're fooling the gun into thinking it's actually closed, that the cylinder's closed, so you can actually cock the hammer and you can see things that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. You can watch the foot down there, make sure it's working, you know, the cylinder lock, which we've already tested because it locks up fine, but you still want to visually inspect it. You can also look in there and you can see that the hand is moving, the part that interacts with the star and actually moves the cylinder. You want to make sure that that is actually working the way it's supposed to. That's one of the things you want to watch. And also, after you actually fire it, you want to check and make sure the firing pin's actually coming forward. Now, if it's a firing pin that's on the hammer, you'll inspect that manually when the hammer's cocked, but you still want to make sure it's actually working and coming through. That the firing pin block or the hammer block is actually letting it come through and strike the round. If it's internal hammer, then you're definitely going to want to do this, or it might not even be there. I've known people who have bought guns before, revolvers, and got home, and there's no firing pin in them. And that's a real pain, especially if you take that gun to the range to test it out, and then you're stuck with a gun with no firing pin. All right, once all that's done, you're pretty much done. I mean, you could have bought this gun probably a few steps ago and been fine. Revolvers are usually good. Someone would really have to be trying to pull one over on you for you to have to inspect this closely. But if you're a real nitpicker like I am, now's when you give it a real good go over. You make sure there's no damage anywhere. You want to check the seams around the side plate. Make sure that no one tried to pry it open. If you see anything like that, you know someone didn't know what they were doing when they were taking the gun apart that might be a red flag. Especially check things like the screws on the side plates. Make sure someone hasn't mucked them up because if they're mucked up, that means someone's been getting into the gun and they don't know what they're doing and they may have mucked up the inside of the gun also. That will be something that I will pass on a gun for. If I think someone has been inside this gun and they don't know what they're doing, if they don't want me to take it apart and look at it right there internally, I am not gonna buy that gun, but most people are not gonna to wanna to do that. So, you know, that will be on you. I still think most guns would be very serviceable and still be good, even if someone stripped the screws or did any of that stuff, because if it passed all those other tests, it's probably fine. But like I said, I'm a real stickler. All right, now one more thing you might wanna do, and this is really a unlikely event, but it's something you should check. In fact, it's something that I checked when I bought this gun, and I noticed there was a part missing. Now, it's not an internal firing pin. We already checked for that, you know, et cetera. And this one has a firing pin on the hammer, but it was missing the trigger stop. You see that little slot there in the gun where it looks like something should be there? Well, it looks like there should be something there because there should be something there. There should be a trigger stop there. But the previous shooter took it out. A lot of shooters do because they don't like them. I'm not really fond of them. And that's why I never put the one back in this one. Now, the guy I bought this from, when I noticed it was missing, he had already told me that he had some stuff that goes with it. And one of the things he had that goes with it was the trigger stop in a little plastic baggie. So I do have the trigger stop for this gun. I just never put it back in it because it doesn't affect how the gun shoots. And I, like a lot of people, don't really like the trigger stops. But if you do find one that's missing the trigger stop, you pick these up for like seven or eight dollars. So it's not a really big deal, but it is something you might want to look out for. All right, now you've inspected this gun, everything looks great. There's only one more thing to do if you wanna be very thorough, and that's look under the grips. Now there's not likely to be any damage under here as far as the mechanical function of the gun, because you know, there's not a lot back here. You've got your leaf spring for your hammer, and you know, that's pretty much it. 
but you do want to take it off and look under there. And the reason you're going to want to take the grips off and look under, especially on a Smith & Wesson, is a couple of things. First off, you're going to want to make sure the strain screw is there. That's what holds tension on the bar here to make it to where your hammer actually works properly and hits with enough force to ignite the rounds. So you're going to want to make sure that's intact. And you're just going to want to inspect the metal under here because grips hide stuff. Stuff gets under them and that's one of the first places guns start to pit or rust is often under the grips, especially if they're wood grips because they hold a lot of moisture. So take them off. Look, make sure there's no damage under there, no rust, no pitting. There usually won't be, but you want to make sure. So I do like to take the grips off. And once you've done all that, you're ready to buy the gun as long as the price is right.